Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War I, a turn-based strategy and war game developed by Fury Software and published by Matrix and Slytherin Games. This is episode number 12 of our Entente playthrough, and we're into late 1915 and the war's going pretty well. Romania just joined the war last turn. The one thing that is a little bit kind of dicey is the naval situation in the North Sea. The Germans have gone really aggressive against us, and they've been pushing our fleet back and kind of doing quite a bit of damage to the Allied fleet. We're doing a lot to them as well, but it's been it's been a bloody affair so far. Uh, we'll see if that gets worse or more crazy in today's episode. Uh, this was taken from a live stream from my Twitch channel, so if you are interested in checking future live streams out, click the link in the description and go on over there. Follow me. You'll get notifications and things like that when I stream. Usually we stream between 8 and 9 o'clock Central Standard Time for a couple of hours in weeknights. I don't have a set schedule of what days. Uh, I try to tweet things out and let people know, but that's sort of the schedule. And if you are interested in the game, there is a link in the description to an affiliate store link, a fully fully authorized reseller of the game. Uh, if you buy the game through that link, I get a small percentage, and you get a Steam key. No pressure to do it whether you want to or not. Totally up to you. With that being said, let's jump back into the live stream uh, and pick things up where we left off. I mean, I'm trying to think of what would be sort of the death knells. It just feels like the Austro-Hungarians losing a couple more units might be all it takes. But again, they'll probably have their morale heartened when Bulgaria joins the war. I'll probably need to shift some of these troops on the Eastern Front south to deal with Bulgaria and also the Ottoman hordes that'll come across when that happens. I suppose for the British, well, I don't have the money left. I was going to say we should. All right, we have 262 left for the French. Is the research we, be, we should be spending for the French? We're investing in command and control, infantry warfare, trench warfare. We haven't really been in, we are developing tanks, I guess. We haven't really built much of anything, though. I guess gas shell production might also be important. So we're real close to the max research for the French. 1600 is the max. I don't know what the Italians are investing. It looks like they got command and control one. By the way, Psych Ward 360. Thank you very much for the follow. Um, Americans are making good progress on industrial tech. Suppose for the French, it's just get these troops into uh, into the fight. Again, by putting some additional troops in here, we improve our chances versus Bulgaria should they join. So I think that's going to do it for this turn, and let's see what September has to has in store for us. Hey, Duck with Shades, good to see you. Bulgarians are at 80% still. All right, so the coup in Greece succeeds, and they're preparing for war. Industrial technology almost to level 2 for France. Infantry warfare development. Big jump for Serbia. It would be hilarious if they got there before any of the other Entente powers. Still, I'm waiting to see, like... All right, so the Germans are going to sail their fleet north, apparently. At least some light cruisers here coming to intercept our destroyers. And some destroyers. There's a pre-dreadnought. A battle cruiser. So this appears to be the War of Destruction for the Germans. Or the Battle of Destruction, or whatever. Oh, God, the whole German fleet's out to play, huh? Holy shit, they destroyed that whole unit? How many goddamn battleships do they have? They seem to be very confident that they can break the blockade. 
guess I wish I had moved some of those other battleship ships that uh battleships <laughs> that uh were not in range. I should have moved them over to support just in case. I mean, we destroyed four capital ships of theirs last turn. There seems to be something bloody wrong with our ships today. Pre-Dreadnought's going to finish off that battle cruiser potentially. Oh my god, let me get away. Let me run away. Whole bunch of air power. Bunch of German artillery bombarding those Russian troops here southwest of Warsaw. That British Corps may be in trouble. Well, maybe not. Guess they're going to survive for another day. I mean, if the Germans break the British fleet, I don't know what to do. I didn't think that was even a remote possibility that I have to worry about, but... Let's take Belgrade this turn, okay? Oh, I forgot about that cavalry unit. I should have pulled them out. Oops. Not sure would we lose one battle cruiser this turn. I guess we'll see what the end turn report says. Politely ask for a parlay before we go run to the Americans and ask for their navy. Uh Greece joins the Entente. Walsh miners and railway go on strike. How about you guys stop striking, okay? Oh, great. Nicholas II becomes commander of the Russian forces. Why would you do that in this timeline, Nicholas? The war is going well for Russia. All right, so we lost the destroyer Foxhound, light cruiser Diana, Oran... Orion, Dreadnought. Oh, so we didn't actually lose a battle cruiser, huh? All right, let's see what the situation is. So I don't know. First off, can we get you guys out of here? Yeah, All right, you got a way to scap a flow. That battle cruiser away. Oh, apparently I can't move. That's great. There's a lot more German warships out here. Why can't you move? You're boxed in. All right. Let's see here. Is this a port? It is not. So you can get down to Cromarty. You're going to engage the Baden. And then try and run away. Nice. Finish off the bottom with a destroyer. Eat shit. 
Alright, so we just got another German battleship. Try and weaken the enemy down with some of our cruisers and destroyers. Is this an armored cruiser that we're going up against? Yeah, the rune. Alright, so we just finished off another German warship. This one, an armored cruiser. So an armored cruiser and a battleship destroyed so far. They've got the Molkta down here. I don't know how many more. And then they've got another armored cruiser here. They've got some light ships here. I don't know what's all here. Okay, so contact, but it's an enemy sub. So it looks like they're screening their battle fleet with a whole bunch of subs. Which kind of makes some sense. Alright, so we'll finish off that pre-dreadnought. Taking a lot of fucking damage, though. Can't swing in on this. So there's a battle cruiser and an armored cruiser here. I mean, the real question comes down to national morale hits. Uh, the Germans are losing a lot, but if depending on what the German subs are able to sort of mop up after this, could be a bad day for the British. The Royal, this is sort of the Turpet's Risk Fleet scenario, right? All right, another German battle cruiser is gone. I'm gonna try and surround my ships here with some light vessels. We know there's probably a couple more German capital ships down here. I don't know how many. I can't really get up at these guys in this direction. So I think... I guess I'd rather include the French, if only because it sort of will make my losses a little bit more spread out. So we drive that German ship back. There's two pre-dreadnoughts here. A crippled armored cruiser here. I don't know what's down here. Interestingly, maybe nothing. We just cleared the sea lanes. Does that mean the Germans attacked and moved? Like, I thought they destroyed some 
light vessels there. We have uh, float plane carriers, not aircraft, not like full-blown aircraft carriers, but... Hey Pickle Hauba, 3079, thanks for the follow. Also Duke Rascal, five minutes ago, thank you for the follow as well. Swing these guys up north. In the event we need those pre-dreadnoughts and the next couple of turns. I'm kinda confused here. By the way, reports, German fleet still has 27 vessels. But what? Like, what's the breakout of that? If they've got a whole bunch more battleships here, we're kinda fucked. Uh, the Royal Navy is still larger at 32, but we do have a portion of those deployed in the Med. So we'll have to see if they keep pushing. I'll, I'll have to try and fall back. It was interesting that the AI kind of AI kind of boxed us in here with these subs. Smart, I guess. We might lose the Emperor of India. That seems like the most likely battleship lost. We successfully pulled the Lion and the Agincourt back to port. But I think that's the naval battle there. And we know that in terms of their ships, we know they have one, two, three, four, five, and six submarines that we can spot. We also know they have one sub in the med, so that's seven subs. So at least seven of their 27 warships are subs. We have like two subs. Then we also know another one, two, three, four light ships here. Then five, six, seven with more heavy ships. So, I don't know. I assume they pulled everything out of the Baltic. I don't know that that's true. I don't know if I just ran into some mines or what that noise was. No indication of any uh, any enemy warships in the Baltic. But they did lose a big chunk of national morale on that. All right, Debrisen looks easy for us to take. Or not easy, but easier shouldn't have said easy we took it but this unit will almost certainly get counterattacked and destroyed still another Austro-Hungarian unit destroyed and the morale's down to 13% Also swing up and cut this German unit off at Grosvaden. What's the diplomacy situation? Bulgaria's at 81%. Alright, let's try to take Belgrade. That's not the result I was hoping for. Huzzah! Belgrade is ours! All 
All right, so we destroyed the enemy unit in Belgrade. We also almost destroyed this first railgun for Hungary. So they're down to 12% national morale. Anything we can do to just keep keep the pressure on the Austro-Hungarians, keep inflicting casualties. Okay. Those Romanians are losing absurd casualties there. Alright, so the German troops are surrounded. We'll actually move these Romanian troops here. Um, so maybe we'll save that core. German troops are surrounded. Kind of got a breakthrough here at Debris, and we may be able to drive west directly on Budapest next turn. And see what we can we can spot out that way. The loss of Budapest would certainly break Austro-Hungarian morale. Okay. Yep, the Serbs are still a growing cons or going concern. We even got the Greeks in on the fun now, guys. Uh, I'll put these guys in Nish. I'm hoping Belgrade is a national morale center. Like, by retaking it, there's a big celebration in... in Serbia and a maybe a morale boost to us and a hit for the Austro-Hungarians. They can't really take much more, I don't think, but I don't know that that'll actually happen. Hey, we sank a uh, Ottoman vessel. Maybe it'll hurt their morale. <laughs> Let's reinforce the troops on the Caucasus front. They've kind of been getting ignored for a few turns. Russian income is pretty damn good right now. Alright. So 205 for the Russians. What do we need to research for them? Probably command and control. That'll make the headquarters units better. Trench warfare's We've been trying to invest in that. It hasn't really seemed to really make much of a difference. Um, mobility, maybe, but I don't know that that'll come in time. Why are we researching heavy bombers? They're almost infantry weapon, though, which would be just great. Uh, I guess we'll go for trench warfare. We've got three chits invested there. Okay. All right, so we spotted an enemy sub that should let me avoid it. Get those capital ships back to port without touching any of those enemy ships so we don't get sunk. 
Also, Greece entering the war gives us all the Greek ports in the Adriatic. And apparently Italy hasn't joined the war, which I don't know if, like, I didn't set the scripting up right, but I, I thought we had set it. We had for sure set it so they wouldn't join the central, or the uh, Entente, but I, I guess we didn't set it so that they wouldn't join the, uh, so that they would join the central powers. Okay, so the Russians, 23 income left. We'll spend that on some infantry here. All right, I should rail these troops next turn. When I have money to do it down to the southern front, I think. Did we do the Western Front yet? I don't think we did. I'll do a 1 to 5 on enemy cav. Alright, so we just wiped out another German unit there. Give me a two to four for sure. Let me destroy another German unit. slowly grinding them back. German infantry units destroyed their national morale down to 56. Their ground units are still in the 60s, though. But the more we can bleed out in the uh, western front, the less they'll have to sort of prop up the Austro-Hungarians in the east. God, I really am suffering from having so many naval units just kind of doing nothing in the uh, in the med. I mean, I can't really afford to let the Austro-Hungarian Navy out. advance my troops a little bit into Iraq to see if the Ottomans are going to throw anything back at us. It says they have 40 units. I, I don't know what in God's green earth they're doing. Um... They're at a thousand. The French are at twelve hundred research. I mean, at some point, if I'm going to research production technology, I should probably produce some stuff, right? The 
so 210. What can the French buy? Well, actually, first, the French have a dreadnought. That could be useful. Serbia has a new cavalry division. I forgot about that. We raised that a while ago. All right, so purchase. Whoops. Purchase. Serbia, can you afford anything? Some detachments. Uh, why don't you save that money? Uh, meanwhile, France, you've got two two eleven. What can you spend that on? I guess a new core. We haven't really bought any new units in a while. Um, and then Russia, you spent your money. Serbia, you've, we're going to keep your money. Diplomacy, do we want to try and spend a little bit more on, on Bulgaria for France? We've got the chits. Let's do it. We'll increase it to 35% chance. Serbia has no more chits. So we'll see if that makes a difference. But we'll move forward into the fall of 1915. With that being said, before we get into the turn replay, why don't we go ahead and wrap this episode up? This seems like as good of a spot as any to go ahead and end the episode. We'll pick things up where we left off in our next episode until our next episode. I hope you guys are enjoying the series. As always, please leave your thoughts down below. If you are interested in checking out live streams like this in the future, check out the link to my Twitch channel in the description. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.